This is Phil Montero, and I'd like to welcome you to Session 2 of the Art of Virtual Leadership, Leading Remote Workers and Managing Virtual Teams in the Anywhere. These three things are first managing by results, not activity. Uh, and that, again, has part of that shift in perspective we're talking about and your perspective of how you manage work. Conscious communication, which has a number of different levels to it, and we're going to spend some time unpacking that in a little bit. And then... Uh, making sure that there are available uh, different levels of feedback and support and making sure you address those different levels uh, to encourage the team to work success. How am I going to know my employees are working if I'm not there to watch them? And it's the, often, unfortunately, the stumbling block that prevents virtual teamwork from spreading throughout an organization or telework or, what, again, whatever you want to call it, from allowing people to work from multiple locations or really benefiting from that. Because again, we said if we – it depends on what it is you're looking at as to what you're going to see. In being a conscious communicator, there really are different levels. Jay touched on some of them there, but it's timeliness of communication, how – quickly do you need that information? There's a level of okay. presence that we talk about, too, there won't be any which is, you know, how much presence, it tor which, you know, it, as far as phone, obviously audio has a certain level of presence because you have the audio cues and you can talk with one another. It's face-to-face -face communication. You know, we talk about small adjustments making, having large effects on what it is you can do. Uh, you know, that cuts both ways. Um, a small interruption or a small bad habit can have can be amplified in its negative effect across the virtual team the same way that a small good habit or a positive effect can have a positive result. But if you can take one of these tools that you're using for project management or for communication or for collaboration, and you can establish a way of using it to encourage informal communication. Sometimes that inspires people more because it's, it's sort of engaging and it's, uh, they'll get it more involved in it, and then they start to learn how to use the tool, but it doesn't necessarily just feel like learning time. You know, you're in there and you're sort of inspired to figure it out because you want to share a picture or you want to uh, share something informally. It's not just a matter of you being able to trust your team to do what they're supposed to be doing and you trusting your employees. It's the coworkers trusting one another. And that's really part of the challenge. Again, I think in the shift as you as a manager is, well, now that they're not seeing each other, how do I ensure that they trust one another? And how do I build that level of trust? Not just you trusting that your team or that the employees on your team are going to do, are doing what they're supposed to be doing. And then there's the important trust that flows back in the other direction, which is your, ver your team trusting you it's as a really manager. It's really important to let your team know that it is okay for them to struggle with the shift to working from a distance like this. If you don't let them know it's okay to struggle like that, you're never going to get the honesty of feedback that you need in order to tweak this process. It's not a natural thing because we're so used to working together. Even if you've been doing it for a year or two now, it's probably something you strung together and you learned some techniques or strategies on your own. And as we mentioned, there, is no, there was no planned method or training involved with how to work this way. And one of the things in your shifting role as a manager is when you're not the one who's always providing the solution, and you reach out to your team and you start asking them for feedback. You start asking them how you're going to communicate. What you start to find is that people start to contribute this tribal knowledge. And if you can build it, you know, again, if you can set up a place where this type of knowledge can be exchanged, that you have this huge repository of knowledge and creativity and you can tap it by opening the door One of the things I'd like to just show you briefly here is a great website, a free resource called timeanddate.com. And one of my favorite things about this site, other than the ability to quickly look up a particular time zone, is this element here called the meeting planner. It's under time zone calculators. Now, if I click on that, and I hear people doing this all the time, and I get this question all the time, you know, I'm meeting with people, let's say I have someone in New York, uh, someone in California and someone in London, and I'm trying to find a great time where I can set up a, a, a quick conference call for everyone there. I can easily come here. I can sit here. I, I, I can just click and choose a number of different cities. So here I'm going to choose New York. I'm going to choose Los Angeles and London. And I can show timetable. And what this site does is it instantly creates this chart for me, shows me what day it would be. As, as you know, particularly based on the time zone, it could actually be a day prior or 
or after. And then it color codes this, telling me that, okay, this color represents nighttime or it's normal sleeping hours. This is the first half of the day when most people are at work Monday through Friday. And I can quickly look at this and determine what are the best times and what time would it be for all the members Things of my like team. We talked about you making sure that they stay in the loop by forwarding these information and memos and the FYI items that normally get discussed in the office, by celebrating progress and the milestones and not waiting till the end. By And I can't encourage you enough that one-on-one -on -one meetings are important. I know sometimes it's hard to make the time for that in your busy schedule, but there are things that people will talk about and discuss in a one-on-one -on -one meeting that they wouldn't be willing to talk about and discuss on, you know, and in a group or, you know, even via email that, you know, if you can have a one-on-one -on -one meeting like that and you make sure that that's one of those things that's sacred and you honor that time, it goes a long way toward that trust that you can develop, again, both ways, that your employee to trust you as a manager and you trust them to be honest with you and come forward with that kind of feedback and support that we talk about. role of providing what it is they need. And when you do that, you can have the Anywhere office. You can work where and when you want and communicate and collaborate with people across distance as easily as if they were across the hall and sometimes, as we mentioned, even better. Your management skills get better. Your team, because you're consciously encouraging informal communication and you're thinking about trust rather than letting it happen organically, you can actually have a more successful team than you have. And, you know, taking this and listening to this information and thinking about it is one thing, but taking action is where the results come from. And like we said, it doesn't have to be huge groundbreaking things. It's those small adjustments. So I encourage you to please take that action plan, look through those uh, some of the things we talked about here in those process and make some steps. That, and put some deadlines on them on when you're going to take these steps and me take them, put them into play, measure them, improve them, do, get that ongoing process and that dynamic process going now.